Well, good morning, everyone. Good to have you join me this morning for a cup of faith. We'll just take a moment to see how many more would join in. And uh, I just need to get it up on my phone. All right. So good to have you good morning, here. Everyone. take a minute and I'll get this thing going this morning. It is a beautiful day today in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, if that's where you're joining in from today. And uh, we've got a little bit of a reprieve from all of the cold weather. It's still winter in Saskatchewan. It's but I think the weather is is getting better and uh, welcome all of you. Good morning, Sharon. If you can just give me a thumbs up to tell me that the audio is working, that would be great. And we'll get into our cup of faith this morning. So if someone will just give me a thumbs up, let me know that we're on. Well, I, I think we are. So we're we're gonna we're gonna get going. So again, thank you so much for joining us for a cup of faith. You know, I I, I think sometimes for me, uh, my cup of faith is more like a thermos of faith because it's always a little bit longer. And this is fresh off the press. I really believe that uh, I, I have something for you this morning that God has laid on my heart. I never come to uh, this time of sharing with you with not deeply pondering and waiting on the Lord to give you something for today. And today, uh, I want to talk to you about distractions. What is distracting you? What's got your attention? You know, information moves so fast. Everything is so loud. Everything is so much brighter than it used to be before. Everything is viring. Entertainment, social media, marketing, it's all viring for our attention. They, it begs to grab a hold of us. And in doing so, many, many times, our minds are diverted from what is most important for that day or for that season that we're in. You know, our, our smart, smartphones are really one of the leading distractions in our life and if i was to say to you what's distracting you right now this morning well me i'm i'm somewhat maybe distracting you this morning from what got what you're about or you're paused in your day to to uh to join into a cup of faith but our smartphones are one of the leading distractions in our lives i recently read that on average this is on average that we either look touch glance at our phones about 2,500 times a day. Isn't that astonishing? Think about how many times you touch your phone or look at your phone. You know, uh, this idea of distracting the, the drivers because of our cell phones is really uh, one of the leading causes of accidents in, in our country. In, in 2016, uh, it led to 32,000 or 2,000 uh, uh, casualties and over 300 deaths. It's the leading cause of traffic uh, fatalities in Canada is distracted drivers. Now, I think we would be wise to adapt principles that would help us to live less distracted lives. Some of you think that's a good idea. However, these distractions are not so easy to notice, the ones that I'm going to talk to you about. And I think we're all can admit to the surface distractions in our life, like how much we might watch TV or on social media or on our phones or playing games or whatever it is. But far, I believe far more detrimental to our lives are the subtle distractions that, that quietly surround us. They're not announced by blinking lights or beeping horns. In fact, they have become so commonplace and ever-present, we hardly ever notice their existence. But these distractions take residence in our minds and it keeps us from living our lives to our greatest potential. So let me share with you two of those 
distractions. The first one is the promise of tomorrow. Here's what I'm getting at. That too often we waste so many days waiting for tomorrow, waiting for that brighter and more comfortable future. We simply endure today hoping for a better tomorrow. We want to wait for retirement before we really start enjoying life or enjoying our spouse or enjoy traveling or whatever it is that you are planning on doing in your retirement and you're just waiting for that day. You're waiting for the account on your, your bank account to get to a certain level before you think you can really enjoy your life. Don't endure today for the sake of tomorrow because we never know what tomorrow will bring. And when you focus so much on the future, you miss, you miss some of the beauty and some of the opportunities that God has for you even in this day. David wrote in Psalms 111, this is the day the Lord has made. Could you imagine if you got up every morning with that idea, I'm gonna live my life, I'm gonna live today. This is the day that the Lord has made. He says, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Here's the second, the regret of yesterday is another big distraction that people live with. To live is to experience regret, folks. Nobody escapes life unscathed. We regret our actions, we regret our decisions, our motivations, but no amount of regret can ever change the past and only those who have come to recognize and admit their imperfections are able to move beyond them. Call your mistakes what they are. Offer an apology when necessary. And then you need to move on. That's a word for someone who's listening this morning. It's time to move on. Don't allow regret from the past to negatively distract you from the opportunities that God wants to bring to you today. Listen to the Apostle Paul. He writes in Philippians chapter 3. And if there's anyone who had had many regrets is the Apostle Paul. He says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to yet have, have taken hold of it, but one thing, I want you to say that with me, one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. Here's a word for someone. There's more ahead of you than what you left behind you. Let me say that again. There is more ahead of you than what you left behind you. There's a great story of Jesus in the gospel. And I love that Jesus was so relational. He had, he, the scripture says that he was the friend of sinners, but he had a number of very close friends. Uh, three of them were Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Uh, these were sisters and a brother, and uh, they were close friends. They lived in Bethany, and he would visit them. And this time he goes to visit them, and it, he catches them off guard. You know the story quite well, that uh, Mary is just very focused on Jesus, and Martha is focused on preparing things for Jesus. And the... The scene unfolds and Mary is sitting there and Martha is running around getting things done. I don't know who you relate to in that story, but I think a lot of us relate more to Martha than we do to Mary. But listen to Jesus' words to Martha. When she complained and she says, he says, Martha, Martha, this is in, in Luke chapter 10, verse 41 and 42, Martha, Martha. You are worried and distracted. I love this version. It says, and you are distracted by many things, but only one thing, say that with me, one thing is necessary. For Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. What is the one thing that you need to be focusing on? You see, that's the, that's the thing about distractions. Distractions take us away 
from the good parts of the life. So what is distracting you? I think we have to be very purposeful in focusing in to find the one thing. What's the one thing you need to be focusing on today? The one job that you, you need to get done. The, the one person you, you need to call to either say you're sorry or to check up on. What is the one thing? You know, David wrote this in Psalms 27, verse 4, one of my favorite passages. He says one thing, in the midst of all the things that were unfolding and all the uncertainty, like a day that we're living in today, this was his one thing. This is what helped him to focus, to get to the best things in life. Psalms 27, verse 4. One thing I ask of the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and to gaze on the beauty of the Lord, and to seek Him in His temple. Maybe today, as you begin your day, a couple minutes, just to focus in with the Lord, to ask Him to help you to stay focused so you can get to the best parts of life, the best things that He has for you. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you that you are able to help us to focus away from the distractions and onto you. So I pray for all of us in this day we would take a couple moments and to focus in on you and to allow you to help us to see that one thing we need to get done today, that one call we need to make, that one moment of quietness that will allow us so much more room in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks again so much for joining us for a cup of faith. If this was a blessing to you, why don't you share it with someone else uh, uh, that they would be blessed by it. We're looking forward to, uh, to this weekend. My goodness, we're continuing in the book of Colossians, uh, a great message to talk to you about the evidence. You don't want to miss it. Invite someone to join in. We're looking forward to it. We still have some room in our 9 a.m. Uh, pod service at the downtown campus. Uh, so if you still want to sign up, there's some room there. Call the office and Ruth Ellen will certainly uh, get you on the list. Have an amazing day. I want you to know Connie and I love you. Think of you lots. Pray for you lots. And uh, just, uh, just, I just believe God has something great in store for you today. So God bless. Have a great day. Amen.